Hello, Decision Makers. This is Sunday, January 31st, uh, 2021. Um, this is the slash lesson book uh, website. It's the Seventh day Adventist Bible study. And this is Doom on the Nations. So that's Isaiah 13. <laughs> Why do the prophecies against the nations begin with Babylon? And what I got is, that is what the oracle said. Uh, Isaiah 13, 1. So. Oh, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Anyway. Um, okay, so. Read through Isaiah 13. And. Notice how strong the language is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that. Uh. Why does a loving God do these things or allow these things to happen? I put, when things are bad enough, there is no restoration. Certainly some people will suffer as well, wouldn't they? Isaiah thirteen sixteen. I put, there is a chance none in the culture would learn better because they would not be allowed to learn better. And how do we understand this action by God? Very thought through, and when no other option is left. That's what I got. Alrighty. What should these texts and all the texts in the Bible that talk about God's anger and wrath against sin and evil tell us about the egregious nature of sin and evil? And I got, sin and evil are real and are too bad to function. Isn't the mere fact that a God of love would respond this way enough evidence to show us how bad sin is? And I just put, yes. <laughs> Um, so we have to remember that this is Jesus speaking these warnings through Isaiah, the same Jesus who forgave, healed, pleaded with, and admonished sinners to repent. In your own mind, how have you come to understand this aspect of a loving God's character? And I got... God as a good friend, just someone who's just like, you're better than this, or you did a good job, or what's happening, let's do something. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, um, ask yourself this question as well. Could not this wrath actually stem from his love? And I got, when evil spreads like an infection, the damage must be repaired before the whole body is damaged. He must have his people in good condition. His love is why he wants good for his people and is jealous for his people. And jealous in this situation is... Fiercely protective and vigilant over people's rights and possessions. Uh, oh yeah, that's the if so, how so. Or look at it from another perspective, that of the cross where Jesus himself bearing the sins of the world suffered worse than anyone else has suffered, even those innocents who suffered because of the sins of the nation. How does the suffering of Christ on the cross help us answer these difficult questions? He wants no, or will, we want no one to suffer near how Jesus suffered, right? We don't want any conditions like that. That's the goal. <laughs> and um, how does the suffering of Christ... On the cross, help us defend. Yeah, so it's just all the suffering. It just kind of just wraps it up in a box with a bow. It's just like, just don't do it. Just don't choose the evil. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's basically that simple. Like, I mean, it seems like it should be more 
complex or something, but really it's just there's Jesus on the cross suffering more than anyone and go the other way of that behavior. <laughs> so I guess that's everything. Bye.